Sir Derek Jacobi, uh, theatrical knight, multi-multi award-winning actor and indisputably a national treasure. Uh, good morning, Ooh. thank you for joining us. Um, I'm talking to you this morning in your lesser known role as patron of the National Drama Festivals Association. Uh, I mean, just looking at your career, I mean, uh, the 70s, I, Claudius, uh, and a BAFTA, um, yeah. the 80s, the 80s, Stratford, Benedict in Much Ado. I remember you as a, a slim hipped uh, and much, very reluctant Benedict in, in Much Ado. I uh, saw you there. I saw you as Prospero, a powerful and, and intimidating Prospero in the, in the Tempest. Um, CAD file on all our TV screens oh. again in the 90s. Uh, and then, um, uh, it, I mean, remarkably, uh, the narrator in, in the Night Garden in the noughties. Oh. And right up to date, Edward VIII in, in, in the, the Netflix series, The Crown, the, uh, the recent one. I mean, talk us through some of your highlights. Well, it all feels like somebody else, you know? Um, here I am in my in my 80s now. Um, I celebrated 60 years in the business last September with a lovely lunch. And uh, I think the, the main thing about my, my career has been I've been very fortunate. I've been very lucky. Lucky in the sense of being given the opportunities mm. to instruct whatever stuff I've got. Um, I, I was very lucky in my, uh, in my birth and my parents. I was an only child, they were also my friends, um, totally 200% supportive of me going into a world that to them was totally alien. Mm -hmm. they, they had no knowledge of, of um, acting, the world of acting. They thought, oh, it, it won't earn you a living son. And uh, they were a bit, a bit wary. But they were comforted by the fact that I'd been to university and I got a degree. So, <coughs> excuse me, if it all went wrong, I could always teach history. Thank yes. goodness it didn't go wrong. And uh, five years into my career, I was uh, not living on baked beans and toast uh, every day. Uh, but I'd done, I went from Cambridge in, into the business. I was very lucky. I did an audition at the Birmingham Rep, um, and which was a noted classical repertory company. Yes. Um, only 22 odd miles from Stratford-upon-Avon. Um, and I was there for three years. And that was my drama school. Um, it was four weekly, Rep. Uh, you play every four weeks. And so over three years, we got through quite a, quite a lot of stuff. Mm. And my great, hope was that I would uh, make the transition from Birmingham to Stratford. Right. As many actors before me had done, people like Schofield, Olivier, Albi Finney, um, they'd all gone from the rep to kind of across. And, uh, it didn't work for me. That was my one, my one bit of bad luck. I, I went across there for an audition and it was like being on Mount Olympus or all the great directors were sitting out in the auditorium. Peter Hall, Peter Brook, Clifford Williams, John Barton. Um, and they asked me to read Ariel in The Tempest, which I did like a sick choir boy. And at the end of it, Peter Brook came to the uh, front of the stage and said the equivalent of, uh, don't call us, we'll call you. So I went back to Birmingham with my tail between my legs and then got a letter saying they didn't think I was ready for Stratford. <laughs> um, so I said to the people at Birmingham, can I have my job back? They don't want me. Um, and then that's when the luck again kicked in because it was the 50th anniversary of the Birmingham Rep. And to celebrate, they were going to do the three Shakespeare plays they'd never done, Titus, Troilus, and Henry VIII. They'd never been seen at the Birmingham Rep. And they cast me as Troilus, Henry VIII, and Aaron the Moor in Titus, in repertoire for 12 weeks. Wow. And one Wednesday matinee, I'm playing Henry VIII, and 
We don't know, we weren't told, but sitting out front was Laurence Olivier. And he came round afterwards. I was sharing the dressing room with um, Cardinal Wolsey at the time. And um, I got out of my gear very quickly. I'd taken off the fat suit, the, the beards and all the paraphernalia. And Sir Lawrence came in, shook my hand and said, well done. Um, and then moved on to Cardinal Wolsey, whom he covered with praise. Um, while I stood there list, watching and listening. Then he left, very charming. And then about 20, 30 seconds later, there was a knock on the door and he came back in and pointed at me and said, you were Henry? And I said, yes, sir, yes. And a week later, he gave me a job um, at uh, Chichester Festival, the second season of Chichester Festival. In, and, 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 and this led to the National Theatre as well, did the founding? That, that October, the National Theatre opened at the Old Vic. 1960, uh, you, 1963. And, and you were a founder member of the... I was, yes. I stayed there for the next six years. Mm. That kind of, that was my, uh, so from rep to uh, my six years at the, the Old Vic at the National, I hadn't been out of work for nine years. And then... Uh, moving on from there, really, I think you did probably about six six years uh, at the National Theatre, and and then uh, and then came Claudius, which is um, uh, I mean you must pe get people come up to you still, I mean other than me, uh, mm -hmm. and say I remember you. It, it in Claudius, it had the 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 stammering, twitching Roman emperor that you w was just riveting watching and it still, it lives in the national psyche, doesn't it? it, it again, it was luck. Um, if I was at a wedding um, last weekend and the bride's father came up to me with reminiscences of I, Claudius. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I, I get, when I say it was luck, I wasn't the first choice for that, that part. Um, they, they'd originally wanted two uh, Claudii, a young one and an old one. Um, and at that point, they wanted, it, it was owned by an American company, um, and they wanted Charlton Heston. Um, uh, he turned it down, and then they went to English, and they wanted Ronnie Barker, um, and he turned it down, um, or something happened and he didn't do it. And then the producer and the director, whom I'd worked with in the early 70s, um, said, uh, suggested that one actor should play him throughout, play him young and play him old, because that's what I'd done with this um, producer and director in 1970. Um, and they said, what about Derek? So the best performance I've ever given was in an Italian restaurant in Shepherd's Bush, convincing the um, American representative of this company, who didn't know me from a hole in the ground, um, to cast me and to say, yes, okay, we'll go with him. They didn't know what they were getting, um, but uh, the producer and the director were, were so keen to have me that um, they swayed it, you know. And they they, they had you, uh, uh, by way of preparation, read the Robert Graves novels, presumably I, Claudius and Claudius the God. Uh, yes, I'd read the novels. I knew the novels. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and so had you, did you all, in, in your, uh, in the best performance you ever gave in an Italian restaurant, um, uh, did, did, were you already into the twitching, stammering? Uh, did you fall into that naturally? Did that develop? Well, what was, what was difficult was that the, the first you see of Claudius is the old man, by which time the, the twitching and the stammering weren't as bad. Um, and then you had, I had to revert to the younger, the young man, and twitching and stammering all over the place. Uh, the only thing that was constant was the limp. 
the twitching and stammering had, had to be refined over the course. But if we started with less limping and stammering, it was really a question, and here the director was so useful, um, to keep me on track, to keep me um, at that stage of stammer, at that stage of, of um, twitching. You know. In the first episode, I, um, I wasn't used to twitching then, and I um, ripped my neck. I had to wear a neck brace. I'm, I'm going to be very naughty here. You can't still reprise it, can you? And, 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 and do you have any of those lines still in your head? You know, well, no, no, I'm, I don't, I'm afraid. But I did learn that the, there was a difference between a stammer and a stutter. And Claudius had a stammer. Um, and my uh, certain of the scripts at the beginning were written for a stutterer, um, and, which meant that if you said the word please, it was p -p 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 you repeated the p, -p, 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 -p. But if you stammered, you couldn't get, you went, you could be saying B, C, anything would come up. Um, you can't. In, in, it's very difficult to help a stammerer uh, because you don't quite know what's coming, the, the letter that he's trying to find. And we had such a stammerer who was the art director's assistant on, on the show. So I used to pin him up against the wall and say, talk to me, talk to me. <laughs> and he didn't mind. And copy him, yes, yes. Uh, uh, I mean, I, in my memory, lives Claw, Claw, Claudius, but uh, that, that could be, a, you know, it's 45 years ago, but I mean... Um, yes, it is, 1976. And, and moving to the 80s, and, and this is, is a kind of geographical link with the area that we're concerned a, a about, because the National Drama Festival Association's All Winners is coming to the Midlands for the first time in living memory, to Coventry, uh, um, for the first time ever, and Coventry and Warwickshire are jointly involved in, in Coventry's City of Culture uh, event. So Warwickshire is very much involved in all this. And of course, you spent a good part of the 80s, didn't you, at Stratford-on-Avon, and, and you must have been living in Stratford, presumably, and, and, and et cetera, and resident yes. in the area. Yes, I was. I was there for uh, two, two years. No, Stratford... Stratford was uh, a, a lifesaver to me, really, because um, for two years before I went to Stratford, I had a terrible attack of uh, stage fright, uh, which I talked myself into. I was on a tour of Hamlet uh, in Australia, and uh, it was the last day of the tour, and we were at the King's Theatre in Sydney, and I talked myself into stage fright. Uh, and I went on the stage and uh, it happened. And every pore in my body opened and I was covered in sweat. I got to the end of the show, but I didn't know what I was doing. I'd done it so many times that I was on automatic pilot and that got me through. But um, I didn't go on stage again for the next two years. Um, I did television and uh, film, but I, I couldn't go on stage. And eventually what got me back on stage was an offer I couldn't possibly refuse from Stratford. What are your memories then of, of Stratford? Happy times, clearly, but what are your memories of Stratford? Oh, very happy. Well, it was a kind of culmination for me and an, an ambition fulfilled. I adored Shakespeare. I was playing four wonderful parts in the main house and in the other place, the, small, the smaller venue down the road. It was a wonderful company um, and lovely directors. Uh, and just being in Stratford, um, kind of living one's life in that theater. And it was just glorious for me. I, I loved every minute of it. Every, it, was, it was bloody hard work too. Um, I can't now think how um, all those lines were in my head because we, we, we brought all the Stratford stuff that I was in to the Barbican after Stratford. And we did all four plays 
in repertoire at the Barbican. Mm. Uh, I must have had thousands of lines in my head. I couldn't do it now. And I can't conceive how I did it then. At, at some later stage in your, your uh, career, you were playing in repertory, in repertory Richard II and Richard III simultaneously, weren't you? I mean, how on earth do you Actually, do that? It's that, that, was, that was under the aegis of Ken Branagh at the, at the Phoenix Theatre in London. Um, and I did Richard II and Richard III. Um, and I remember at the same time, we were filming Ken's um, Henry V, and I was playing chorus at Shepperton. And uh, he was a bugger because he, he, he would keep me out at Shepperton's at about five o'clock, and I'd be screaming, I've got Richard III at 7.30, Ken, let me off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh dear. I mean, it is extraordinary, isn't it, to say, you know, I've got to put down Henry V at 5.30 because I've got Richard II. I've got Richard the, yes. <laughs> it is an extraordinary, extraordinary life. I mean, it, to say that your career has been varied is to completely understate. You've played the master in Doctor Who. You've won an award for appearing in Frasier as the world's worst Shakespearean actor. That was my easiest part. <laughs> really? Yes. Falling off a log. <laughs> <laughs> Not literally. Uh, uh, but I mean, d d d d why? Why was that your easiest part? Well, um, it, a, a, a for a start, I, I knew Hamlet back to front. And the opportunity to send it up was, was God-given, you know, yes. uh, to go on as Hamlet and play it for laughs. Oh, what could be better? And, and you got an award for it? As, as, as yeah, best. I, I got an Emmy Award, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. And of course, to a whole generation. I mean, I vividly, as we've discussed, being of, 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 of a, a certain age, remember you, your, your, some of your, your early career highlights. But whole generations of, of people now in their 20s think of you uh, as the narrator for in the night garden and the voice of Eagle Piggle. I mean, that's, that's what you're known as. I mean, that, yeah. that's, you know, I mean, how does that compute? How do you- well, it, has, it, it has a great responsibility for the, for the youngsters that were watching. So in that sense, it was more difficult than Serrano de Bergerac, uh, but it was, it was lovely to do. We recorded many of them and uh, I grew very fond of Upsy Daisy and Eagle Piggle and the John Billy Boos and all of them. Um, and th that, you know, is still, I did them many years ago now. Mm. It must be about 10 years, nearly 10 years ago. Yes. And still mums and dads, uh, when they meet me, talk about In the Night Garden and it's still going up there. Um, and, and, you know, and the, what was good about it, I think, what is good about it is that it entrances the child and involves the child, um, but it doesn't excite the child. So that by the time it's over, they are drifting away like the little boat um, at the end. They're drifting off to sleep. They're in a lovely, gentle, sleepy state mm. and, and I think it does that very well very accurately can you I'm asleep talking about it <laughs> <laughs> I'm not um, I mean, in this extraordinary career Sir Derek um uh of you know 50 years or whatever it is or 60, pro 60 sorry 60 uh, um uh, and an, an, an extraordinarily varied in terms of, of media uh, that you've used, but uh, I mean, right up to date with uh, the Duke of Windsor in Netflix's The Crown. Um, is it possible for you to choose highlights? I mean, or is it just all just too much to choose from? Oh, well, the thing that I suppose made my, uh, made the greatest glorious, yes because it got me pumped into people's uh, homes over a period of six months. I mean, I'd been at the National, I'd been an actor 
for 16 years uh, until Claudius came along. Um, uh, and my parents were very proud of me, but they couldn't, they couldn't talk to the neighbors about me. They couldn't crow about me to the neighbors because the neighbors didn't. No, you know, I was an actor with the National Theatre. I could have been working to the National Coal Board, as far as they were concerned. Um, but suddenly, I was, I was well known, and and it was be because of um, because of Claudius that I went to America um, and uh, did the first of the uh, five plays that I've done on Broadway. That was all down to Claudius. So Claudius really was a high spot. Lots of actors have peaks in their career. Uh, some don't. Some have more than one. I suppose for, for me, Claudius was that one. But Hamlet also for me what, what, was, was a pinnacle because I played it around the world. I played it at Elsinore Castle in Denmark. I played it in Russia. I played it in China, um, in America, um, in Australia. Um, th that, that was a, certainly a highlight. And it still feels like somebody else. Thank you. Um, and you're, you're still working professionally, uh, uh, but you can't be with us in, in, uh, in July in Coventry, uh, unfortunately. Uh, because of a professional commitment. You're working uh, in York. Can you tell York, us what, what yeah. you're doing now? I'm doing a film um, called City Girls, uh, playing a rather grumpy old man. Uh, um, and you'll never believe who's playing my daughter. Surprise me. Elizabeth Hurley. Really? Playing my daughter. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lovely, it's a sweet story, um, and it's funny. It's got lots of uh, good uh, comic lines, I'm glad to say. Mm -hmm. um, so now, in my, uh, I'm very much into the fifth act. The interval's long gone, and, and I'm very conscious of being in the fifth act, and so I'm not quite so worried about what happens. Okay, Sarah, Sarah. Do you have in in uh, in, in uh, ambitions for your fifth act? I think you haven't yet appeared in Coronation Street. I think that that was one of the. Uh, uh, yes, really... I've been asked twice. Oh, really? Yes, but each time I was miscast. I felt I was being mis I being miscast. Ideally, what I would like to do is what um, Ian McKellen did. Mm. He went in for six weeks, playing a character had no connection with any character in the street, came in, did his birth, left. Now, I like to do that, but they, two times they've been asked to be in it, and uh, it's been a wrench to say no, but they, they've um, related me to somebody in it, you know, and, and and related me not very well. And I felt totally miscast. And I don't, if, if I do it, if I ever were to do it, I don't want to feel um, I'm in the wrong body in it. You know? mm. I mean, after such uh, a wonderful career and with, with so much that's gone so well, you don't want to, in the fifth act, mm. make a, a, a mistake in effect. And particularly with Colley, which I've been watching since 1960. You're a big fan. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I've seen some wonderful acting in Corrie. Mm -hmm. Wonderful acting. And knowing the circumstances under which they all work, the pressure under which they all work, I've seen some stunning work. Oh, dear. So, Derek, it's been an absolute joy talking to you this morning. An absolute joy. We are so proud. Uh, to adopt the word, um, to have you as our patron. And you know, I mean, you're such a special person, such a very special once in a generation actor, uh, if, if not better than that. Um, and, and, and we deeply appreciate your support. Um, we're sorry that we can't 
welcome you to Coventry this year, but we would be delighted to see you in Coventry again you know, or wherever we turn up in, in future years. So, I mean... I will be there. May yeah. I ask you also to always write my reviews? <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs>